Um, first, let me thank everybody uh, for indulging me at the, at the hour of the day. I was at the um, major uh, sheriff's conference in Minneapolis and flew back. Um, obviously, uh, today is a an incredibly sad day for the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office and for the law enforcement community, not only throughout the greater New Orleans area, the state of Louisiana, uh, as well as uh, the rest of the country. Let me thank not only the law enforcement leaders that are here with me today, but so many around the country that have sent their condolences to the JPSO and obviously to the family of Detective David Michelle and to his wife Angie and their family. Um, you know, on, on this sad day. Uh, today at approximately uh, 1221, Detective Michelle, while patrolling in the Manhattan Corridor and throughout the Pebble Walk subdivision, uh, noticed an individual who was following behind someone else um, who probably appeared to be nervous. And we know that because that individual that was being followed by someone was on the phone with his girlfriend articulating that he was very concerned about being followed by this individual. And we have confirmed that by talking not only to that person but the girlfriend as well. And Detective Michelle uh, pulled up and immediately told that individual to move on very quickly and approached the individual that was following that individual. He grabbed uh, that individual and pl placed him on the car and proceeded to an, an attempt to try and search him. Within a second or so, that individual flipped around, went chest to chest with Detective Michelle, pulled a gun from his waistband, reached over his shoulder and fired a shot into the back of Detective Michelle. As Detective Michelle fell to the ground, he fired two more shots at point blank range into the back of Detective Michelle. Within seconds, um, Detective Michelle was able to put out on the air that he had been shot. Within seconds following that, our Project Star officers who are also working that area in tandem with Detective Michelle arrived on the scene and we began to look for the perpetrator. I want to thank the residents of Pebble Walk and so many citizens in the area that provided so much information in such a short period of time uh, so that we were able to put together the trail that the perpetrator who has been identified as Jermaine Joseph Nevo, black male, 19 years of age, date of birth 213 of 97 of 3123 North Durbingney Street, New Orleans. He also goes by an alias as Jermaine um, Joseph uh, Nevo. Um, and we were able to put that trail together and uh, was able to find him uh, as he was crossing a, uh, into a number of backyards in the 1500 block of London Cross Road. And he was uh, ultimately apprehended um, by our officers. Uh, he was carrying a 38 caliber Rossi five-shot revolver. He only had three K he only had three bullets in the gun. It's a five-shot gun. It carries five casings. He had three. He fired all three uh, into the back of Detective Michelle. Um, we've already run the ballistics on the gun and have been able to. Uh, uh, positively link the uh, projectiles uh, to the gun that Nevo was carrying. Nevo does not have much of a criminal history, um, although in February of 2016, 
He was arrested by the New Orleans Police Department for contributing to the delinquency of a juvenile and possession of a firearm. He pled guilty in June, just a couple of weeks ago, to possession of stolen property, the stolen gun, and was placed on probation. At the time that he was placed on probation, he was living with his grandmother in New Orleans. To the best of our knowledge, I think he was asked to leave, and then he moved in with another grandmother who happens to live in Pebble Walk, and that's why he was in Jefferson Parish. We were fortunate that we've had five independent witnesses that were in the area positively identify Nevo as the shooter and also uh, validate uh, what forensically uh, we know now as it relates to the gun and the projectiles as to uh, what actually happened um, on the scene. Um, so once again, I want to thank uh, so many people that provided um, so many, not only pictures, but um, eyewitness testimony in such a short period of time uh, as it relates to that. I just got off uh, a plane not long ago, and I just visited uh, with his wife, who's also an employee of the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office in our insurance division. Um, his father and his stepmom and, and other family members. Um, they wanted me to let everybody know that they really appreciate the overwhelming support uh, that, that they have received thus far. Um, they truly appreciate everything uh, that everyone has offered and the, the offer of helping with the funeral arrangements and uh, everything else has just been completely overwhelming. Um, David, um, I wish I had a thousand of him. He was a great officer, and the reason I know that is he used to do this for free. He was in the reserve division for a long time. Uh, he could light up a room. I knew he was a good man when his dad told me tonight. He called him every day at either the beginning of his watch or the end of his watch to, to let him know that he was okay. And I could sense in his dad's voice that he's going to miss that short call every day. Whether we recognize it or not, in this country, we are in a crisis. And all too often, the people that serve in the law enforcement community that are here to protect all of us far too often face the end of their watch <clears throat> so unnecessarily. And all too often, as I sit in the now famous coffee shop, and people that come up to me and ask me, Sheriff, what's going on? Why is this happening? What are we doing? What's this all about? I wish I had the answer. I don't. And after 39 years of law enforcement, I'm as baffled today, I guess, as I've ever been. I understand, and then I'll answer any questions, I understand that there's a um, a video, and I appreciate the fact that the videos come forward as well, uh, while our officers are uh, arresting um, Jermaine Nevo, um, that, that shows uh, Nevo being struck by our officers while attempting uh, to gain control of Nevo 
uh, who was still armed, by the way, uh, while we're trying to gain control um, of NEVO. Um, we will look in uh, to that happenstance. Uh, we will uh, reach out to uh, the folks that uh, shot that video. Uh, I hope they will come forward, and, and we're going to go out and try to find them, obviously. And I appreciate the fact that they brought it forward, and I appreciate the fact that the media has shared that video uh, with this office. Uh, we intend to, to interview them uh, to see what that's about. Uh, I would also let you know that shortly after that particular happenstance, while taking Nevo through that uh, building and into the front, uh, Nevo attempted to um, to uh, remove himself from the, our custody again, um, although we didn't get into an altercation, but it, it showed, you know, w where the situation was as as it relates to Nevo's uh, being recalcitrant um, and not being compliant uh, as it relates to our arrest. You will also notice in that video that our officers were ripping fence boards out of a fence. And you see our officers looking around because the original story that we got is that there were two perpetrators, not one. Ultimately, when we were able to gather the witnesses and, and kind of get through the final debriefing of the witnesses, did we find out that there was only one perp. So while we were on that scene, we were still looking for a second perpetrator. Um, and you see officers on the other side of the fence in, in, that, in that video as well uh, still looking for an additional uh, perpetrator. So this investigation continues as, as it relates to uh, the surfacing of um, that video and obviously with the uh, finishing up of, um, of the other evidence that we need to process. Uh, as soon as we have the arrangements for Detective Michelle's funeral, um, Carl Fortunato will be releasing uh, that information will be forthcoming. I'll be happy to answer any questions.